All right, today what I wanna do is take a look at resistive forces. And to do that, we're gonna take a look at a boat which is moving through the water at some initial velocity V. Now, as the boat travels through the water, it has to push the water out of the way as it travels through that water. So because the boat is pushing on the water and because of Newton's third law, the water is gonna be pushing back on the boat. And in this case, that means there's going to be a resistive force between the water and the boat, which on the boat will be a resistive force backwards. Now there's also gravity and the buoyant force acting on the boat vertically. Where gravity is acting downward and the buoyant force is acting upward and these two forces simply cancel each other out. So to look at exactly what's going to happen once this engine cuts out, I first want to take a look at Newton's second law. Now vertically the boat's not going to be moving or accelerating, we're only talking about this boat moving horizontally. Now once the engine is cut out, the only force which is going to be acting on the boat horizontally is going to be this resistive force backwards. So we can say the sum of all forces acting on the boat is going to be equal to R. Now I do want to establish a direction here. Let's go ahead and say, just like usual, the up and to the right are positive. Now because up and to the right are positive, that means this resistive force is going to be in the negative direction. Now what we're trying to do in this problem is to come up with functions for the position, velocity, and acceleration of the boat as functions of time as it coasts through the water. And we're gonna do that by looking at Newton's second law and simply by realizing that the resistive force is acting as the net force on the boat. So I'm gonna rearrange this and show you how we'll get kinematics out of this. Now realize, as this boat travels through the water, this resistive force is proportional to the velocity. All this equation is telling us is that as the boat slows down or as the velocity decreases, the resistive force is also going to decrease. And the relationship between V and R is simply given by this value B. Now this isn't a coefficient, it does in fact have units, uh, but really what it is is a way of talking about the amount of drag on the boat by the water. So in substituting this up here, we come up with this which is telling us the relationship between the velocity of the boat and the boat's acceleration. Now remember, we're trying to come up with the position, velocity, and acceleration of this boat as functions of time. And we'll see we have velocity and acceleration here, but there is no time in this problem. And what I want you to remember is there's a relationship between velocity and acceleration. We can talk about acceleration as being a change in velocity over a change in time. And so substituting this in here, we now get... And what we're gonna do with this equation now is set up a differential equation in order to solve for the velocity as a function of time. So to do that, we're gonna separate out our variables, our variables being V and T. Now by separating out our variables, what we're able to do here is take a look at the sum of all changes in velocity. That is, integrate all of our changes in velocity. And we're going to do that over the sum of all changes in time. We're separately going to integrate our changes in time. Now realize these are definite integrals here. I want to look at the time from when the engine cuts out, so that's a time of zero, until some point in time t later. And I want to look at the velocity from the initial velocity which the boat was traveling. Let's call this vi to some velocity at some point later on, which we'll simply refer to as V. Now integrating both sides, we come up with this equation. Now rearranging this for V, the velocity at any point in time we get, this equation. And what this does is this relates the velocity at any point in time, so really we'll call it V of T, to the initial velocity and these other variables, the B value and the mass of the boat. Now you'll notice if we make T zero, this term e to the negative BT over M is going to reduce down to one. And that means the initial velocity per this equation and per the initial conditions in the problem is VI. But as time goes on, that velocity is going to decrease. So to get a better handle on what this looks like, let's go ahead and graph the velocity as a function of time.
Now we know at a time of zero, the initial velocity is vi. And as time goes on, that velocity is going to decrease. Now the boat starts at some initial velocity vi, it slows down, but what you'll notice is that this boat has a velocity which approaches a horizontal asymptote. Now that mathematically is because there's no value for time we can ever put in here, which is actually gonna cause this term e to the negative bt over m to equal zero. And that is to say the boat's never actually going to stop. Now I know that seems a little bit counterintuitive, but if we go back up here, where resistive force equals bv, the velocity is going to approach zero, and as it approaches zero, the resistive force is going to approach zero. And so what we'll see as the resistive force, which is our net force according to this equation, approaches zero, the boat's going to cease to accelerate. And so what we see is this horizontal asymptote for velocity. The boat will never truly stop. Now to continue solving this problem, let's go ahead and solve for the acceleration as a function of time. Now we know the relationship between acceleration and velocity is given by this equation. That is to say, if we were to take the derivative of velocity with respect to time, we would have acceleration. So here we have a function for velocity. So if we take the derivative of this function, we'll get the acceleration as a function of time. Now again, let's go ahead and graph this function to see exactly what this looks like. Now, according to this equation, the initial acceleration is in the opposite direction of velocity. And that is to say the boat is slowing down. It's not speeding up when the engine cuts out. But as time goes on, because the velocity decreases, like we saw up here, the force on the boat, which we saw here, is going to decrease. And as a result, we see the acceleration also approaches zero, much like the velocity did. That really just goes back to this equation right here. As velocity decreased in magnitude, so did the acceleration. Now last, we're gonna go through and take a look at the position of this boat as a function of time. And to do that, we're gonna take a look at this equation right here for velocity as a function of time, and we're going to integrate it to come up with position as a function of time. Now, in order to make the initial position of this boat zero, that is to say it's at a position of zero when the engine first cuts out, we're gonna to need to go through and put in a certain value here for plus C. Now at a time of zero, this term over here is going to work out to be negative mvi over b. Now I want the total position to equal zero at a time of zero, so we need to add in mvi over b in order to make that initial position zero. Now let's take a look at the graph. See, this graph, much like these others, also approaches an asymptote. Only this asymptote is not centered at zero because we took this function and raised it up m over b times vi. Ultimately, what we've said is it started at some position of zero and is approaching some final position. And the oddity of this is, even though the boat is moving forward for an infinitely long amount of time, the boat will never stop. It will only ever travel forward a finite distance that finite distance being m over b vi. So in this problem, what we've managed to do is take a look at the resistive force acting on this boat. And by applying that to Newton's second law, we've managed to come up with the position, the velocity, and the acceleration of the boat as functions of time. And we've also graphed those functions to get a better handle on exactly what those functions look like. So this is the boat coasting through water problem. And that's all for now. Thank you.